The Hidden Cost of Money How Financial Forces Shape Our Lives and the World Around Us Written by Sebastian Bunny Narrated by Russell Newton The Hidden Cost of Money Huh? Hidden? What's hidden? Sure, you instinctively know that it costs something to produce money. The design, the ink and printing of the paper, the natural resources used to make coins, managing the supply chains downstream of the mines and paper mills, and the eventual distribution of the physical notes and coins into circulation. This is all an enormous task and one that incurs lots of tangible and easy-to-see costs. So, what is the author and the title of this book hinting at? What are the costs that are being hidden from us? And why am I only hearing about this now? What have been the social, environmental, and political impacts on a local and global scale? Are the people in charge of and perpetuating these hidden costs aware of the long-term, unintended consequences to humanity and the world at large? As you've probably already experienced through the cost of living crisis, you'll see a continual withering away of your purchasing power if we continue along this current economic path. This isn't a drill. Your money, which has been diligently saved from tiresome work, has been and will continue to be gradually siphoned off in a seemingly unceasing list of rising costs and new expenses, trapping you in a cycle, affecting your judgment, and disconnecting you from your core values. The fact that you are likely reading this whilst exhausted on a commute to a job you dislike but have to perform, just to keep food on the table, should be a cause for concern. If you do not change direction, you may end up where you are heading. Lao Tzu So, how do you turn the ship around? Work harder and longer hours. Compete with your colleagues at all costs to get ahead. Climb that corporate ladder. Get that promotion. Make it into that corner office. Get that five-bedroom house and BMW on finance. Then lever up and make smart investments in the stock markets. Right, guys? Well, that's the conventional advice you would get from many of the flapping-head self-help gurus out there. But there is another way, a much simpler way, and it all starts here, with this book in your hands. You can only fix a problem if you know what the problem is. This book has been thoughtfully written to take you on a journey through the history of money and how our species uses money as a form of communication. Seb Bunny explains how this vital communication channel has been captured, producing a myriad of unintended consequences and shaping society in unexpected ways. Seb's passion and unique skill set is educating others, and he boasts a wide variety of teaching experiences. His career has taken him from leading mountain biking expeditions through the back mountains of British Columbia to co-founding Looking Glass Education, an online education platform designed to remove the veil of complexity shrouding our monetary and economic systems. With this book, The Hidden Cost of Money, Seb will expose the reality of our current economic path and then offer you a potential solution that you might find quite surprising. Then it will be up to you, dear reader, to decide which path to take. I hope to see you on the other side, where Seb, myself, and many others wait to welcome you. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more.
Morpheus. Daniel Prince, author of Choose Life, host of The Once Bitten Podcast. S.W. France, September 2023. Introduction Money is more than just a medium of exchange. Why money is the ultimate form of expression? Self-expression must pass into communication for its fulfillment. Pearl S. Buck You ever feel like you're treading water, struggling to keep up with the rising tide of expenses? From groceries to housing to transportation, your cost of living continues to climb while your wages struggle to keep up. Deep down, you know something just isn't right. You've pushed yourself to the limit, hoping that a little more grind would bring you closer to your goals. However, despite your tireless efforts, it doesn't seem to get any easier. Life still seems like an uphill battle, with few lasting rewards to show for all your hard work. It's a frustrating and often isolating feeling. But the truth is, not only are you not alone in this struggle, but the problem is not with you. The problems we face are with our money. Bit by bit, our purchasing power has been withering away, and this erosion has far-reaching effects on our lives and the lives of those around us. The necessities many of us have taken for granted, a roof over our heads, a reliable car, a full stomach, are becoming harder to afford. In turn, simple luxuries like occasional travel or a daily latte become more of a pipe dream. In the not-too-distant past, a sole breadwinner could afford a spacious home in the suburbs and still have enough disposable income to sustain their household. Unfortunately, as we've all seen, those days are long gone. Today, millennials born between 1981 and 1996, have reached their prime home-buying age, yet despite making up nearly 22% of the population, they represent just 4% of the current housing market. And that's not because millennials aren't diligent savers. By comparison, when baby boomers, born between 1946 and 1964, were of a similar age, they owned upwards of 35% of the housing market. Or take vehicles, for instance. In 1970, your standard American could buy a brand new, average-priced car for 45% of their income. Today, that ratio has more than doubled to 106%. As you crack open these pages, I invite you to consider how money has impacted your own journey and those around you. Have you ever had to sacrifice something important to you because of financial constraints? Has the pressure to earn a living ever affected your mental and physical health? Have financial pressures ever meant that money has become a source of conflict between you and the people you care about? And, perhaps most importantly, what kind of ripple effects might this decline in purchasing power have on you, those you care about, and society as a whole if it were to persist or increase? Most of us will have some confronting answers to at least one, if not all, of these questions. But does it have to be this way? The answer is a resounding no. The gradual erosion of our collective purchasing power is not an inevitable part of life. Rather, it results from how our governments and central banks govern money. Given money's remarkable, often negative capacity to shape our lives and influence our perspectives on the world, it's no wonder that throughout history, and even today, many people view money with suspicion or even disdain. We're all familiar with sayings that warn against the corrupting influence of money. Money doesn't buy happiness. Money is the root of all evil. It's rude to talk about money. 
These statements speak to the potential and power of money, physically, socially, and psychologically. However, money holds a broader significance than just facilitating exchange. Money, like language, is a powerful medium of expression, providing insight into people's values and priorities. How we spend our money sheds light on the very essence of what we hold dear. Therefore, while money itself may not directly buy happiness, the extent to which it supports expression undeniably influences our perception of it. Does our money hold value over time? And can we spend our money where we see fit? For this reason, it is often overlooked that money is inherently amoral, neither good nor bad. That said, this doesn't mean there aren't superior or inferior forms of money. Our perception usually gravitates towards the unfavorable due to the unintended consequences of money in its current form, combined with its built-in limitations that hinder our ability to express ourselves. So, while at first glance money may seem like a simple tool, a middleman between people and their true desires, let's look at what makes money a potent form of expression. Time, as it is finite and irreversible, is arguably our most prized possession. We only have so much time in our lives, let alone in our day. Because of the scarcity of time, we ought to be incredibly conscious about how we choose to spend it. Some of us may wish to prioritize activities like baking and crafts, while others prefer sports and music. Although where we would like to spend our time differs from person to person, one thing is certain. Most of us have more we would like to do than we will ever have time for. Considering the scarcity of time and the infinite demand for it, the choices we make as human beings regarding how we invest our time and what we are willing to exchange for it hold tremendous significance. Our allocation of time serves as a direct reflection of our priorities, values, and aspirations. Therefore, by examining how we distribute our time, we can gain valuable insights into our individual and collective preferences, societal values, and the things people attach meaning to. Fortunately, we have the means to monitor how individuals choose to allocate their time. Money. Money acts as a medium of expression, offering insights into the choices people make with their time. When we work, we are remunerated for our time spent in the form of money. For us to obtain money, we must expend time. In this way, you can think of money as a method of storing time, time that can later be spent on whatever it is we want, obtaining housing in a community or location where we feel a sense of belonging, acquiring food that aligns with our tastes, experiencing enjoyable and entertaining activities, purchasing aesthetically pleasing objects to personalize our living spaces or enhance our appearances, investing in education for ourselves or our children, among numerous other examples. But as with anything, money can be corrupted. Some forms of money, such as physical coins and bills, struggle to maintain value, while certain digital currencies impose usage restrictions. For instance, in China, restrictions are placed on domestic households to prevent capital flight abroad by limiting their ability to invest. These constraints not only distort our sense of priorities, but also obstruct our capacity to allocate our time in alignment with our core values, thus impinging on our ability to express ourselves authentically. Moreover, when a significant portion of our time is consumed by working 60 hours a week just to afford the essentials, it leaves little time for connecting with family, 
preparing enjoyable meals, or engaging in community volunteering. The diminishing purchasing power of our time raises questions about our capacity to prioritize long-term goals when immediate needs demand a considerable share of our limited resources. If your money is losing value from one day to the next, are you incentivized to save for the future? Of course not. You might as well purchase what you can while you can. With this in mind, in the current state of affairs, we cannot accurately assess what it is that people value. Our visibility is limited to what currency controls and monetary intervention dictates, preventing us from gaining a comprehensive understanding of true societal values. Therefore, Money that enables us to express what we value accurately is crucial to effective decision-making, the precursor for economic prosperity. Without such money, accurately assessing society's needs to thrive becomes a formidable challenge as we remain unaware of what people truly value. When our money is free of limitations, intervention, and constraints, it can more precisely reflect what society values, enabling us to better invest our time, energy, and resources in productive pursuits that align with our goals and create value for ourselves and others. Many modern economists have spread stale maxims about how the world works. You may have heard that inflation, or the continual rise of prices, is a natural and unavoidable phenomenon. Monetary intervention, such as government bailouts and other forms of financial assistance, is necessary to prevent economic pressures and ensure stability. Endless economic growth and consumption are both possible and desirable. Yet in following this wisdom, wealth inequality continues to expand, and mounting health issues, social tension, and financial instability are becoming the norm. These trends should give us cause for concern. As tempting as it may seem to continue along this well-trodden path of monetary intervention, maybe we should step back and ask ourselves, are we building a monetary system that allows us to thrive and adapt to our changing conditions? Or is our monetary system inadvertently setting us up for failure by undermining our decision-making and altering our sense of what truly matters. In this book, I want to take you, the reader, on a journey into the depths of our monetary system, exploring the incentives that emanate from our money and how they impact who we are and how we act. Along the way, we'll discuss how money, in its current form, adversely affects almost every aspect of society, including social and environmental impacts, the deterioration of the family unit, the decline of altruism and the rise of consumerism, meaninglessness, and apathy, the overconsumption of our planet's resources, economic consequences, the climbing cost of living, elevated risk-taking and unproductive business practices. Political implications. The infringement of free speech and human rights. The rise of government overreach. My intention is to challenge the conventional belief that money is a wild, uncontrollable force that requires taming by the government and central banks, and instead illustrate how it is the government that has created the beast that is our current monetary system. By better understanding the difficulties and far-reaching effects of our money, we can not only better assess our changing circumstances, but we also have the power to build a more sustainable, equitable, and just society. And don't worry, this won't be a dry lecture on economics. Instead, We'll explore real-world examples, and as we approach the end of the book, I'll leave you with some food for thought. The possibility of an alternative monetary system that realigns incentives and fosters truth 
integrity, and freedom of expression. With this in mind, I want to invite you on a journey of exploration into how something as counterintuitive as money can profoundly impact our lives, from our personal authenticity to the health of our planet. Everything is downstream of money. If we are misguided in our approach, the consequences won't just be a few lost coins in the couch cushions. This has been The Hidden Cost of Money How Financial Forces Shape Our Lives and the World Around Us Written by Sebastian Bunny Narrated by Russell Newton Copyright 2023 by Seb Bunny Production Copyright by Spoken Tome Media You need to hear this.